Hey guys, Bridget here. In this video, I want to talk about UX prompts and how you can create an efficient prompt for a UX app or creating the structure of a website. Now, the basics are going to always be the same, but of course, you're going to need to adapt the prompt to the specific goals and needs of your project. So, see this as a starting point in order to brainstorm the ideas in order to create a solid prompt and then of course you're going to need to always adjust it based on the specifics of your project so this is a basic brainstorming structure so to speak now the basic of a prompt is always going to be the objective and the purpose so you want to describe to ChatGPT, Cloud, Gemini, or whatever uh, AI tool that you're utilizing, what is going to be the objective and the purpose. And this should be pretty self-explanatory, but uh, you want to focus uh, on uh, what uh, is uh, the problem that the app or the website solves, uh, and uh, also what are the business goals. So you want to solve uh, uh, as a problem uh, that is the reason why your client or yourself with your personal endeavor or or in business and uh, on top of that uh, you might also consider what is uh, the ideal scenario that uh, your user or target market uh, is actually looking for because uh, when it comes to ux and marketing in general really there is a lot of focusing on the pain points and also on what success looks like is just going to be invaluable information and it should be the basic of pretty much any project really so that is going to be the very basic element and by the way we're going to see an example of a prompt at the, the later stage of this video so just uh, bear with me for a moment as we go through these uh, different elements first then the second one is going to be the target audience who are the users so you want to give as much information as you can uh, on uh, who is going to be the target audience because uh, that is going to of course reflect uh, on uh, both uh, the structure of uh, the communication that you're going to do on a website for example especially if it's a landing page and uh, it's also going to have an impact on uh, the app of course since if uh, the target audience is uh, a, a younger uh, audience it's going to have uh, implications and uh, a different uh, communication strategy than for other audiences or if uh, the audience is uh, primarily uh, you having certain other characteristics so it's not just about the age it's really about uh, who is the end user what are their problems and uh, what they are their goals so always uh, focus on uh, this as the very basic as uh, this is going to give you solidity overall in uh, the prompt generation then the third point is going to be the competitors and market analysis and this is one of the elements uh, which uh, um, i see most designers uh, not uh, focusing on uh, enough and uh, it's uh, actually really important to always have uh, a contextual overview whenever you're tackling any UX or uh, web design project as to who are the competitors uh, and uh, how does uh, the company that you're working with or for is um, in the marketplace in, uh, in context and uh, specifically you want to understand uh, what uh, makes uh, them stand out uh, from the competition so there is this term in uh, marketing and advertising which is a usp which is unique uh, selling proposition and that uh, essentially means uh, what uh, makes them uh, stand out uh, compared to the other companies in uh, the same marketplace so this uh, is actually extremely important uh, for um, the website especially since uh, you are going to need to tailor the communication around uh, what really makes them stand out uh, and uh, why they should choose uh, your product and service compared to others 
So that's another thing that you definitely want to consider um, in the prompt. And by the way, these elements can be included in the prompt in a very simple way. So it doesn't need to necessarily be paragraphs and paragraphs of text. In fact, most of my prompts are probably between two and three paragraphs. And then I just adjust uh, and uh, start a conversation with uh, AI and adjust uh, the, the prompt and uh, the results uh, based on, uh, on what I receive. And, um, but you always want to keep uh, these elements on, uh, um, from a high level in mind. And then the fourth one is going to be, of course, uh, the key functionality and uh, features. So this is actually going to depend if uh, you already know the functionality and features. Sometimes you're going on a, you know, a project and uh, you're just brainstorming uh, uh, even the basics. So you need to, to start from a uh, fresh uh, canvas uh, and uh, AI can be excellent in order for uh, generating ideas uh, as to what are going to be the core features that could be added based on uh, this uh, specific requirement. So for example, uh, to give you a practical example, I recently received uh, an inquiry to create uh, a uh, operational app in a specific uh, field and uh, the client didn't really have uh, um, an idea of what could be the key functionality and features. So it wanted me to brainstorm uh, what could be those functionalities. And uh, I utilized AI in order to uh, have a list of uh, ideas that then we can brainstorm together and then we can start a discussion. So the discussion is not going to start from uh, a white canvas, uh, but there's actually going to be some, uh, some basis to it. Uh, and uh, AI can be extremely useful. But on the other hand, uh, you can also um, already know what are going to be the core features. So adding this uh, to the prompt is going to make it uh, so much easier. And uh, on top of that, uh, uh, another thing which uh, is uh, often uh, uh, not considered is the prioritization. And uh, this is extremely important because um, it's uh, something that you can add in the prompt, uh, which is going to essentially help uh, engineer or reverse engineer the project uh, based on what is really important to show and to communicate uh, with more emphasis compared to some other elements. So if you have a, a list of say 10 or 20 features, uh, adding uh, this uh, to the prompt, uh, notifying uh, um, ChatGPT or whatever AI tool as to what uh, are going to be, for example, the top three elements to prioritize, that is really going to be helpful. And uh, on top of that, uh, you can also uh, map out uh, the user journeys. So you could uh, give insights as to uh, what are the key tasks that user need to complete? And this can be from a, from a high level. So for example, I'm a manager, I enter this uh, web app and uh, I expect to do X, Y, and Z. And uh, of course, also you can uh, talk about what are the potential pain points uh, that the current app uh, has, uh, or what are the pain points that I want to avoid? Maybe the competitors have these uh, uh, issues and uh, with our solution, we want to solve this. So this is uh, pretty much it when it comes to the main points that uh, I always like to keep in mind whenever I'm creating uh, prompts and I'm uh, discussing solutions with, uh, with AI. And uh, I want to give you like a very brief example of a prompt. This is a, a simple prompt. This can be much more in depth. Sometimes I do prompts which are like one page long, uh, for example, but uh, other times it can be um, as simple as this or even more simple. So for example, over here, we're saying uh, design a mobile responsive e-commerce website that targets uh, tech-savvy millennials aged 25 to 35. So we have uh, the context, uh, we have uh, uh, the some idea of uh, the target market, uh, and then it continues. It must offer a seamless browsing and checkout experience with minimal clicks. So that is and like the goal and what and the pain point that we want to avoid, uh, which is implicit. So we, we don't want a lot of clicks. 
uh, competitor analysis should focus uh, should include Amazon and Shopify and uh, the goal is to create a simpler more personalized shopping experience the site must feature core functionalities uh, such as advanced search product categorizations some other things so again here we kept it pretty simple um, we can uh, we can go in much more detail in all of these uh, elements we can talk about uh, the elements that we like uh, and we dislike about amazon and shopify which are the main competitors uh, we can uh, talk about uh, uh, the features in depth uh, we can add ux considerations uh, so you can see how all of this uh, can can really uh, be magnified and uh, tailor-made based on uh, the specifics uh, of the project but I just want to give you like a high-level understanding of this isn't rocket science this is uh, quite uh, um, easy to do in uh, most cases uh, uh, especially if you break down the, the basic blocks uh, and then you can uh, simply see what uh, AI uh, gives back uh, and then you start a conversation and you make it better and better with uh, each and every input. So this is it when it comes uh, to the very basics uh, of uh, UX uh, prompts. Uh, um, if you have uh, any ideas uh, on uh, how to make a UX prompt uh, solid and efficient uh, within your design workflow, I'm uh, happy to uh, see what uh, you suggest uh, in the comment section and if you have any questions about uh, uh, UX prompts in general feel free to leave a question below and uh, very last thing if you want to learn more about UI UX design and web design I have over 900 videos which are entirely for free on my YouTube channel so if you're interested in that feel free to check them out and I'll see you in the very next video